and welcome to Lost Suitcases, Souls Driven by Wanderlust, where every week we talk about travel and the amazing people who have adventures and inspiring stories about places they've been and the things that they've done. And this week is no exception. I am really excited to share with you my guest, Christy Cote, who not only has traveled the world, but has pretty much danced all her way across. She <laughs> is an Argentine tango dancer, coach, choreographer, performer. She's been an incredible resource uh, to the Argentine tango community in the US and across the world. And Christy, thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. Well, thank you so much. And we have a lot in common because you're a tango dancer too. <laughs> I am. And that's partly why I really wanted to have you on. And Christy, I, I, it, I think it's been a while, but I know I, I've seen you perform in the Bay Area. Uh, it was like holiday time many, many years ago. And I've done a couple of your workshops and you have been such an inspiration to so many of us in the tango community. And you have a lot of stories to tell, I know. And you have, you have some pictures as well. I know we can share. Yes, so I, I think- stories. Not all of them yes. I can share the stories, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you know, tango dancers, of course, that's always true. But um, I think maybe to get us started, I think one of the questions I know people always ask me, and I'm sure you get all the time is, why Argentine tango? Like, how did you get into this? Yeah, I always say that with? Argentine tango found me. Uh, because I was a ballroom dancer for many years, as many tango dancers have that sort of background. And uh, I saw the show Forever Tango in San Francisco in 1995, and I loved it. And I had seen Argentine tango before, but there was something about that show that just captured me. And I immediately wanted to do it. And I had the opportunity, it just sort of, everything sort of fell into place for serendipitous, serendipitously, um, because I was able to take a trip to Argentina shortly after that. And the day I came back, I met one of the dancers from the show who became my teacher and mentor, the late Carlos Gavito, very famous dancer and teacher in the world of tango. And he really took me under his wing and taught me everything I needed to know about the world of tango. And so I was very, very fortunate to make that connection so early on. So that was really just right place, right time, right person. It was. and But also I think there's something wow. deeper. It's like people come to tango at a moment when there's some sort of void in their lives. It happens, like it's very obvious, you've probably seen it, like where people lose a loved one, or they have a, a breakup or a divorce, or they lose their job, or they move to a new city and they feel alone. There's something that draws them without them really realizing why. It draws them to tango and tango sort of embraces them and they feel this warm energy, wonderful people, the beautiful music, the nostalgia behind the music and it, it fills the void in some way. And sometimes it's less obvious. You know, for me, I think, I mean, I actually had a breakup right before the, both with my ballroom dance partner professionally and with my boyfriend at the time. So there was definitely a void. But also later on, I felt like there were many reasons why tango came into my life. Mm. I, I, that resonates with me a lot. Uh, for yeah. me, it was a medical crisis, you know, yes. and I, I needed yeah. to get in touch with my body again and, I think dance dance saved me for for sure, and I believe that there is such a there's such a therapeutic um, core, you know, to dance dance in general, but partner dancing in particular. I think. Do you find because it's absolutely, you know, it's creating something with someone else that someone may be a complete stranger, and I think that's actually more magical sometimes, right? It is absolutely, you know, and especially in this day and age. I mean, right now is a little different place in the world but you know in recent years we all into our electronic devices and texting and messaging and facebooking but we don't have enough personal connections so um, coming into a, a tangle class or even ballroom class any kind of dance where you're connecting with people it, physically as well as emotionally it's just an amazing thing and it's really good for the heart and soul and right now we're all missing it terribly <sighs> Yes. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons that I'm doing this show. Actually, yeah. this is filling a, a travel void that I have. And it's, yes. it's, yeah. it's really hard. The, the connection, just all of us are missing that connection, but I think dancers, I mean, this is what you do for a living, right? It's exactly. just, yes, it's, it's scary times. Do you want to talk about that now? Actually, it might be a good time. Like, what yeah, are you doing? Yeah. How have you adjusted to to this yeah, well in my little collection of photos that i brought for the show there's a couple of pictures i'll show you but um 
you know, we've gone from being in a crowded room with everybody dancing close together and actually sort of complaining that there was not enough elbow room for dancing. But I don't think anybody will complain again because they all miss being that close together. And yes. so I've basically reinvented myself as a teacher online with Zoom classes online, which is really a stretch. I mean, people really wonder how the heck could you teach Argentine tango online? Um, but yet there are a lot of things to work on in terms of technique and understanding the musicality and the structure of the dance. So we've been able to um, keep going with the regular weekly classes that I had before with a good group of people um, every week. It's not for everybody, but um, about half of the people in, have embraced it and come every week. And I really look forward to it. It's like the moment in the week where I feel like I reconnect with those people and we have a good time. We try to be creative and we have other guest teachers, which is really cool because we can have, we had a guest teacher from uh, Buenos Aires on the, on the call. Uh, and we had one from Southern California and we have different guests because they can come from anywhere. And that's something that we didn't do before. So it's, it's, you know, it has its pros and cons, but it's definitely nice to think of it as a temporary solution to the situation. And that hopefully we'll get back to dancing again. Yeah, no, I, and of course it depends a lot on whether or not the students, the participants you have, if they have, if they are isolating with their partner, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, my husband, my husband and I are, you know, we dance, of course, and we're used to dancing with other people and going to milongas. And of course, we can't do that anymore. But at least yeah. we have a dance studio in our home. And, you know, we dance here. And, and uh, at least we have that. But yeah. I think if I didn't have that, I mean, I would still dance, you know, by myself, there's plenty of technique to work on, like you say, but it's exactly. just... It's, you know, your heart just, it, it, it is a partner dance. I mean, that is the, the core and that's what's so compelling about it. And Absolutely. so you know, it's true, like 90% of the students on these calls are single just because 90%. Yeah. yeah oh, we have wow. Very few, we have very few couples on the zoom call. And so they're all working on their own part. And, you know, I always call it kitchen counter tango. So you can go along your kitchen counter and do your ochos and stuff. It, it's actually <laughs> many things that we can work on, but. <laughs> oh, that's, wow. 90%. I'm a little, I'm a little surprised. Um, yeah. 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 That is, that would make it, that would make it very tough. Um, do you want to, do you want to show? Can we, can yeah. we, can we show them some photos? I think yeah, that would be, a little that would variety. be awesome. I tried to pick ones related to the tango dancing and the travel that I do. Oh, perfect. And, uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is great. All right. We go down here. I love, I love this show because, uh, you know, travelers have fantastic pictures. <laughs> oh, there we go. I love it. Yeah. Oh, it looks so good with the lost suitcases. They yeah. love that. <laughs> so this is one of my promo photos, but I chose that one because an interesting thing happened with this photo um, taken by Tanya Constantine in Northern California. She does a lot of stock photography. So um, sh this picture showed up in many places around the globe. And I have a couple of examples here. Oh, let's see here. There's one in, um, oh. in this is in Thailand. Oh, we can go back there. Okay, let's see real quick. There we go. Okay, so that's in Thailand. And that so wait, they just they just used it. You were in Thailand, or what? Explain so this. Assume that so these photos go into stock photography, which is sold online through these various websites. So you have to pay okay. for the photo, and then you can do whatever you want with it. So um, I'm not sure about this one in Thailand, but we presume that. This photo was purchased and that the photographer was paid for it. I signed off on the rights to use the photo uh, for the photographer to sell my photo. And okay. but it's kind of fun that it, it shows up here in Thailand. And one of my <laughs> students happened to pass by and kind of stopped and took a picture. I couldn't believe what, what he had seen. I was there. just going to ask you, how did you come to, to know about this? That yeah, That is so yeah. funny. And it, it's a dance place, too. So, you know, this. I think the student was actually going there to dance. And I'm sorry. I love the seafood and dance. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Lots of seafood and dance. It's not something that I would naturally put together. <laughs> exactly. And then on this one, this is the same photo at the top there, which is in an American Airlines in-flight magazine. Oh, and wow. Advertising an event that is that was happening in Buenos Aires at the time, Mundial del Tango, the big international tango congress, or tango yes. competition, which um, I have nothing to do with, actually, but there's my photo advertising <laughs> that event. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. And I love it. PCS Bank in London. It was on a billboard and New York Times, a few other places. 
Oh, that's so yeah. funny. There's some other promo photos. And they're oh, just that's classic great. tango shots, so, you know, that yes. here it is, Argentine tango, the big lunge, you know, all the yes. drama of Argentine tango. And uh, the fan, of course, always part of that, a little throwback to the uh, the Spanish influence. And this is, a, you know, Beautiful. performance, and it's like a show tango number with a little sentada, we call it, where the lady sits on the knee of the leader. <laughs> and this is my all-female tango company, Tango Confusion. So I also, I dance with a lot of different male partners, but I also dance with this group of women. And uh, we all lead and follow, and we do, we explore the dance beyond its traditional boundaries. So it's, we've been doing that for about 15 years, and it's creative and fun and kind of interesting. Oh, that and, is fantastic. Thank you. And this is one of the most fun photos from Tango Confusion was, was taken in Buenos Aires because I don't know if the listeners know about the, you know, the traditional ideas we, around Argentine tango is always between a man and a woman. And some people feel very strongly about that and actually don't appreciate or want to see women dancing with women. And there's a, a range of attitudes about that, but it, it, it has changed a lot in the last 20 years. Um, but it's st there still exist um, a lot of uh, tango aficionados which who don't think this is a very good idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised to hear that though, since the origin of the dance was men dancing with men. Correct? Exactly. I mean, that's but for so that's okay. But this is not. That's yes. Well, there's one big difference about that because in the history, when those men, of course, the the history of Argentine tango is all the immigrants that came to Argentina at late 1800s, early 1900s. Huge immigration of mostly men, as you know the history and. You know, it was a melting pot of cultures, mostly Europeans, and then mixing together with the Afro-descendants because there was the slave trade to Argentina in the 1800s. And so this whole mix became mostly men sharing their culture, and they wanted to dance. And they wanted to dance with the few women that were left. And to do that, they had to learn how to dance and do it well. So the only person to practice with was another one of their buddies. So there's the history of the men dancing together, but they never went out to the milonga, the social dance party, to do it socially. They were only right, doing it right. to get good so they could dance with the women. So there began the whole culture of, you know, the macho man and the subservient woman and all that. Well, tango today, as you know, is, is quite different, um, but there still exists a little bit of that feeling that a dance of tango must be between a man and a woman. Well, I'm a very liberal person, so I have very different ideas about that. And thus, I was one of the founding members of this company, Tango Confusion, 15 years ago. So we fought through a lot of that, a lot of those, you know, stereotypical ideas. And even we went to Buenos Aires many times and performed. Um, one night, I remember we performed in the famous EDL, Cafeteria EDL, which is a famous milonga location, very traditional. And we were performing to the music of Piazzolla, you know, very avant-garde music and all. And one of our friends was sitting next to an old, um, gen older gentleman in the, in the milonga. And he, when we were announced, he said he got up and he walked out to have a cigarette because he didn't want to bother watching those women dance. And wow. Piazzolla music is very long. The songs are very long. <laughs> so yes. five or six minutes later, he came back and he said to his friend, ah, the, like the chicas are still dancing, you know, and because it was, he couldn't believe they were still dancing six minutes later. And then he began to watch and he said to his friend, oh, they're not too bad. <laughs> so not we, too bad. Yeah. So the friend that was listening in reported that to us. And I felt like it was a win for women dancing together. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I have to also say how much I enjoy the prohibido sign. Exactly. Uh, that's, that's above that. That is. Exactly. Did you plan this or was that a surprise to you? No, we did plan it. We saw that sign, which of course means prohibited. And so it was just so yes. perfect to have the women dancing together there in front of the signs. It's one of my favorite pictures. <laughs> I love that. That is fantastic. Yeah. And th this is the, also in Buenos Aires, the same women in front of a really uh, spectacular, on the rooftop of a spectacular building. As so many buildings there are, you know, of the European architecture, as you know, and beautiful, beautiful uh, city of Buenos Aires. So that makes oh, me that's a gorgeous shot. Oh, you the whole group is just beautiful. Thank you. And this is in Buenos Aires last year. So I thought this is an interesting photo because this advertises the International Tango Congress for 2020, March of 2020, which never happened. And this was back in March of 2019. 
It was a promotion for a year later when the event would happen again. And the, the event's been going on for, as you can see there, 22 years. So there we were smiling. This is one of the ladies that I work with, and she and I co-host the groups of students that we take to Buenos Aires every year specifically to attend this event. So we were, there we are smiling, saying, look at next year, you know, we're all going to be coming back to this event. And we had to cancel our group who were ready to fly that day to Buenos Aires. We had to cancel the group because it was, just, it was uh, March 10th, actually, that we canceled the group. And, you know, that was right about the time when people wow. were not sure where we were going with all this pandemic. And it became clear that, well, the government of Argentina had then announced that they would quarantine people coming from the U.S. And that was the end of the decision. We just had to yeah. cancel. So Argentina really, they locked down hard and fast. Absolutely. Um, if if I remember closed, correctly. Yeah. yeah. Airport closed wow. to the middle of August right now. And yeah, so that's, uh, you know, it's kind of wow. telling right there, a big event that just didn't happen. So and these are pictures of what this is the classes of the International Tango Congress where we, we take our students every year and we teach there as well. And the black and white check floor was very stereotypical of the dance halls in Buenos Aires. Everybody's having a good time. Aww. When I look at these pictures of people sitting so close together, I, <laughs> I kind of think, right? oh, gosh, <laughs> they're too close together. This yes. Is, um, my uh, partner, Chelsea Ng, who I, she teaches at, in uh, City College in San Francisco, Argentine Tango, and she and I bring our students together every year. So this is our class there at, at the International Tango Congress with people from all over the world, which is so much fun. And even speaking different languages, there's always this communication going on that's kind of funny. And um, this is, and there's also a big show that we do each year. And I, I, I like this that. picture because it says "En Scenario," the stage in Spanish. <laughs> I love it because that dress is bomb, Christy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's gorgeous. It's made in Argentina. You too. Can of course. Sometime <laughs> next time. Maybe. Uh, Mimi Pinzon is the, the label of the lady that makes the tango dresses in Buenos Aires. She, she oh. uh, costumes for all the great dancers, so happy to wear one of her dresses. Oh, gorgeous. Um, and this is, uh, you probably recognize La Boca. Is the famous. Uh, oh, of course. Yeah, these yes. are a few pictures from Buenos Aires. These are kind of tourist pictures, but I'm no photographer, but these are a couple of glimpses. I, I saw your wonderful program with Lev, the photographer. And then as I was picking my pictures, I thought, oh, my goodness, I won't be able to live up to that. But <laughs> Well, you know, Lev is an aspiring Argentine tango dancer. So he would oh, say to that, oh, um, yes, that. that everybody has their own talent. So do not worry. These, these photos are great. Oh, bandoneon. Yeah, that's the wonderful instrument of Argentine tango. And it's really a German instrument that was sort of, we call it the immigrant to Argentina and became the major focus of the Argentine music from the 1930s onward. And this is in this art studio of an artist friend of mine, Guillermo Alio. And he is a wonderful artist and tango dancer. And he has this bandoneon there. So we visited his studio and you can see the sofa there is has a little bit of paint on it. <laughs> yeah, a little I'm bit. Holding the band bandoneon and looking like I'm playing it. <laughs> So, that I, is a really tough instrument, I have to say. It is something else. It's a piece of work to learn how to play that. And uh, I've always been amazed just looking at all the different keys and, and all of that. I'm very impressed with people that can do it. And I've so, heard that it's it's much more difficult than the accordion, which obviously it, rep, it, uh, it, it, it looks that. very much like an accordion, but it's not. That's what they say, yeah. yeah. So this is... Um, is one of the things that we do in Buenos Aires, visit, visit La Boca area. And this is San Telmo, the barrio of tango. It's just a typical building there. Street artists everywhere. And flower markets. It's so colorful. And of course, the media lunas. So these are the best, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> they're, they're like croissants, but they're sweeter and smaller. And oh, my gosh, they're just fantastic. And they bake them fresh at every corner of the entire city. They must bake millions of media lunas every day in the city of Buenos Aires. And this is a very colorful scene from San Telmo where they're marching in the street. It's not unusual to see this sort of thing. And they're, they're doing the music of Urugu Uruguayan based music like candombe and murga, which is with African roots, very percussion, very cool, you know, just marching through the streets, so colorful. 
That is so interesting. You know, I, I saw that in Buenos Aires and the other place that I saw that a lot was in Cuba. Oh, and yeah, that's, that's I, nice. There has just got to be something. And I think it's very spontaneous. I think people, you know, sometimes they plan it because they're, you know, all, they're all wearing the same outfit or something, but sometimes it just spontaneously happens. And I love when artists come together and suddenly they're just going to create something. And then the next thing you know, it's a whole parade. And then yes, you know, exactly. everybody comes out and I would be asking things like, you know, is this planned? Is it a holiday? Like I'm totally clueless. You know? <laughs> and they say, no, this just happens. Wow. That's and, really cool. You're just like, okay, I love this. <laughs> the interesting thing about Merga too in Argentina is a pro it was originally a protest dance, which they still use a pro as a protest sort of march. So if they're protesting something, they will come out with these drums and do the Merga. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. Man, you know, they even have such an artistic way to protest. I they love do. It. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> this is a typical cafe restaurant, you know, it's just very Argentine. One of our favorites there in the Plaza d'Italia, I think this one is. We can see an example of the stunning architecture around the city and the mate. So I don't know if everybody knows about the Argentines and the Uruguayans with their mate cup. So they drink yerba mate, sort of a caffeinated beverage, which people just, you know, drink all the time with the bombilla, the metal straw that comes out of the cup. And here they're just selling them on the street. They're just lying there on the street, like hundreds of them for five pesos each. <laughs> I think that's how they stay up all day and dance all night. I think that must be it. There is something like, going on there. When when do you people sleep? <laughs> That's what I always wonder. People always ask me that, but you know, I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> I always I thought it was the mate. Like, <laughs> yeah, drink a lot of caffeine or, you know, I would say that we have to sleep twice a day. So it's sleep from four to eight in the morning and then from four to eight at night. So we can go be awake during the day and go dancing when the milonga is open, which doesn't really happen until midnight. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and nobody really looks at you, right. If you show up at midnight, it's like, you know, it's oh, too yeah. early, right? That's, that's when the tourists show up. That's right. Exactly. Nothing really gets going till 2 AM. I was going to say around, around two, you try and hit around <laughs> two. Oh, that's a great picture little picture of the streets of Buenos Aires. It says Buenos there. It's kind of a nice little scene. And the, so many taxis, you know, the streets are always filled with these kind of little bit old-fashioned style taxi. Really fun. Great way to get around. And this looks like Buenos Aires, but I included this picture by photographer Malia Walsh because it's our Milonga in San Francisco at the Verdi Club. It's gone through different generations. I actually ran the, the Milonga for many years with... Um, over, over the years, uh, we called it the Verdi Club Milonga, and then it was, um, now it's called um, Milonga Male, uh, Malevaje, and happens, was happening at least a couple times a, a, a month. But you can see we have the live orchestra and room full of people dancing, and it looks, this is what you expect to see in Buenos Aires, but this happens in San Francisco and many places all over the, the world, really, in this way. And you can that's, I love the setup there. That was that's gorgeous. It's a beautiful oh, that's room beautiful. and it makes for a wonderful Milonga. It's just, you know, a magical place, really. And uh, so if you ever, anybody ever comes to San Francisco, you can check my website and come visit. And uh, this is a, a really nice picture of just two people in a beautiful tango embrace dancing. I think it's a great, that's, great example of tango. That's what it's about. And these are some pictures of teaching with my teaching partner, Eduardo Salcedo from Buenos Aires. We do a lot of work together. And this is, we're outfitted as for the boot camp. So we do these like, intensive weekends where we, we get everybody doing push-ups. No, <laughs> mostly dancing tango, but they have a lot of fun. So, Oh, beautiful. Yeah, so these pictures are really fun to look at right now because it kind of reminds me of what we were doing and how we were so close and everybody was having a wonderful time Aww. together, dancing, huge <laughs> groups of people, not social distancing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this is in my Aww. home studio. We're actually right here where we are. And, um, you know, you can see small space, people dancing close together there. And this is a favorite class that I've ever done, which is in Swaziland, believe it or not. So I had the opportunity to travel to South Africa for other reasons as well. But I, I taught some classes in Cape Town. And then the friends that I was with, um, we had this connection with this children's home in Swaziland. So we went there for the day. We collected donations before we went. And 
It was a whole day of culture for them, and part of it was for us to teach an Argentine tango class to the kids. And this was one of the most fun things I ever did. <laughs> Look wow. at that little boy. I wanted to take him home. He was so cute. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. Oh. <laughs> And this is um, the festival in Sao Paulo, which is also a really cool festival they do every year. It had to be canceled this year, of course. And um, the cool thing about that is they work with underprivileged children. This is not the underprivileged children, by the way. <laughs> this is the staff, actually. <laughs> okay. And they, they have this whole group of young people that they teach tango to. And then they put on shows every year and they just they get the kids, you know, doing something artistic and constructive and bring them into another world. So thank oh, you. That's great beautiful. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this is in Union Square in San Francisco. So sometimes every year we do an outdoor class there. Union Square is, of course, the major center area of downtown San Francisco, where there's often artistic events and art shows and that kind of thing. And once a year we do or once a month, actually, the Bay Area Tango Association puts on an event that I do it once a year where I teach a public class there and do a little show with my students and kind of encourage people to try Argentine tango. And here they are dancing. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. We used to have in San Diego the Celebrate Dance Festival in Balboa Park every year. Oh, yes. And, and I, was in a, I was in a group and we would do that. And it was also outside during the day in the summer. And do you know, I got sunburned through really? fishnet stockings. <laughs> That's great. So you had permanent fishnets on your neck. I did. And it looked like I had a disease or something. It was <laughs> hilarious. And I, I have to say that was one of the funniest, like, tango fallout things that I, I ever experience I, I just didn't think about what that would be like to get really? sunburned through fishnets but yes yeah, I I think it is you know it is so important for people it's not something I mean of course we're going to have links down below and everything to for the for uh, viewers to see some videos but yeah. if you have the opportunity folks you know after all this is over this is a dance you need to see live <laughs> um, there's just it, it's kind of mesmerizing in a way that you know ballroom and a lot of other dances just Yes. You know, some of those dances are very showy and they can sort of reach out through a screen. Argentine tango is, is much more subtle. I mean, there's show tango, of course, but I mean, right. it, it, the subtlety of it is what kind of draws you in. And so if folks have the opportunity to see it live, I, I, I really encourage that. It's just, it's so beautiful. And I think a lot of people have, you know, find the opportunity to see it live in the, in the way that you said, like with show tango in a show or... Um, yeah, or in a performance of some kind, but not many people find their way to see the real tango, the socially danced tango amongst av everyday people. And exactly. when you when you search it out, you'll be amazed and you'll see people not doing the showy thing. In fact, if you're in the social milonga and you, of course, as you know, if you do a lift <laughs> or you do a drop to the floor, people would literally oh, no. at you. It's really not. The oh, no, that, that's it's not acceptable. It's just yeah. not the right place for that. Exactly. Yeah. But what you do see is you see that wonderful embrace. You see the arms around each other and it's, yes. you know, it's really magical. And you get that feeling that kind of comes through even when you're not doing it. But I also would encourage everybody to just try it, you know, because everybody can do it. I know it's like people think of it as, oh, my gosh, that's a difficult dance. I would never be able to do it. But I always try to compare it to learning a foreign language, which is not an easy thing to do. But everybody can do it. You know, I, I study Spanish. And at first I learned just a few phrases. And I'm still speaking Spanish. And I can communicate and take a vacation to Mexico or something. But if you want to write a novel, of course, it's going to take years of study to get to that point. So it's yeah. tango is the same way. It's kind of a it's kind of a journey, and you just have to enjoy the journey and enjoy it at the place where you are at in that journey. So here's exactly. here's all my students. They're they're learning right there. This is one of the boot camps. We have everybody in the red t-shirts are the more advanced dancers that come and help the beginners. So that's beginners. nice. I yeah. like that. That's a really that's a really good experience for, for both actually for beginners as well as advanced dancers. That's great. Yeah. And this is our the studio in San Francisco called La Pista. It's a tango only studio, and um, we have classes there. This is where we normally have classes every week. And this is back in the day when they were having classes. <laughs> that's beautiful. And th these are some of the photos that, to tell about what's going on now with you know outside of the everyday meeting, but. 
fortunately for me, I, I have always done a lot of online instructional videos. So this is in the studio of Dance Vision in Las Vegas, where we produce many instructional videos. And fortunately, those were already online and people could access them before the pandemic. So that's that's helped me a lot. But we also have to move into, you know, the online format like this program. There's more Dance Vision. This is like a program I did for the Dance Vision YouTube channel showing my kitchen tango, kitchen counter tango techniques here. <laughs> Dancing fabulous. Myself. And I put this picture here just to show, you know, one, okay, here's my studio in San Francisco, it's full of people, shoulder to shoulder, and this is how we teach now on Zoom. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, this is the, this is. This is where we've come to. <laughs> it's, it's it's breaking my heart, but it makes my heart happy that you're keeping the community together and that, you know, everybody knows that we, we will get through this and we will dance again. Yes, um, exactly. But yeah, this, this is, it's, it's hard. It's, this is really hard. Yeah. It uh, is. I'm not going to cry, but I could. It's, it's. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's so much tango means to so many people. You yes. know, it's, it's a part of their lives. I mean, some people refer to it as a religion. That we're a little bit sure religion. Sure, I'm gonna. And I think stop the uh, sharing screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think that it's also for me anyway. I think dance. I don't know if I'd call it a, a religion. I understand that people might, but it's definitely helped me in my mindfulness practice because okay. when you dance you have to be in the moment. Absolutely. And if you are worried about, like if it's a choreography and you're worried about the trick that's coming next or you're beating yourself up over something that you messed up on a few yeah. seconds ago, you miss the minute that you're in. And so for me, dance is really, dance trained me to yeah. be fully present. Absolutely. And wh whether people are aware of it or not, I think that is a really big draw because you can truly let go of all of your anxieties and you know and just be and you're in yourself in your body with another person with the music yeah. and for me that's everything yes one time I had a, um, a student for a long time um, Reb Anderson who's a Buddhist um, I guess priest is the right word I'm not sure what the word is but um, he led a big group at Green Gulch in Northern California and he was studying tango, he and his wife, for many years. And then one day he said, I want, I want you to come to my practice, the, the group there, and, you know, do a little tango thing with them. And we can, we do like a little talk about tango. So it was interesting because they would do these, these lectures and stuff for various different subjects week to week. And, but everybody was so curious because they had heard that the, the, you know, the Zen master was into Argentine tango and they couldn't imagine really. So we went out there and we did a little thing and, and more people, apparently the, there was the most well attended lecture of any lecture they had ever had. <laughs> it was like I believe it. <laughs> and they wanted to hear about the Zen master and his tango. And uh, I don't know what they were expecting, but I think they really enjoyed it. We, we did some simple walk. We did, well, they do, you know, um, in Zen Buddhism, like walking meditation. So we kind of started with like a walking meditation, which is right up their alley. And then, you know, put in some simple tango movements and everybody was just having a great time because they're so, like you said, like they're, they're able to focus. They're really good at uh, mindfulness and meditation and all this. So this just fit for them. And it was, a very I can, cool I can absolutely imagine that. And I think that that's part of the meditative experience. And especially if you have the opportunity to go to Buenos Aires and, you know, everybody makes fun of it, you know, they start dancing at two and they'll dance, you know, into sunrise. Right. But there is that meditative, like you really do lose track of time. Absolutely. It, it's, yeah. it's surreal. I mean, it's the, I don't know. I, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, but the, the other interesting thing about it is how that it is such like a language that we learn and we can do it with anybody anywhere in the world. Because I think people feel that it must be choreographed and that you can only do that with your partner because how would the partner know to put that leg there and not bump into each other or kill each other in the process? But it is like a language and we all have the same grammar and vocabulary that we learn with our teachers and all. And so if you and I go to Buenos Aires, we can dance with anyone there. We could go to Paris tomorrow and dance with anyone there. And it's such a universal language, really. And it's... Um, surprising to a lot of people that Argentine tango is as popular as it is all over the world. 
which is a nice tie-in with your program being all about travel and everything that happens when we travel. And people who dance tango tend to travel a lot. Well, they did anyway, and go to festivals and tango events around the globe. And when they get there, they meet all these people they never met before. And instantly they have this bond, even though they might not speak the same language and they can dance together immediately. There's no discussion needed. They know the same language. That's right. And I actually think that's part of the appeal too, because you really realize how much communication between humans is nonverbal. Yes. And that is something that, of course, we're, we're losing, right, as we go into more and more screens. But dancers know this, and, and I agree with you. I think that pretty much, well, everywhere we go, I mean, I always have dance shoes, always. I mean, yes. you, just, you just, you never know where you're going to end up. And you have dance shoes in the car, in your suitcase. I have a spare. I carry them on because I will not be separated from my shoes. And for those of you who don't know, dancers have shoes that you yeah. can't wear like outside. They have suede on the bottom. So, right. so you have your dance shoes and you're ready to go at all times. But, Absolutely. but when you, you show up somewhere um, and, and you have that experience and you can't speak the local language, but it just doesn't matter. Yeah. It's dance transcends everything and yes. being able to, it, you know, I've always kind of thought of it like a superpower because you don't need to be fluent in all the languages of the world. If you can speak dance, because you can okay. go to any city mm -hmm. and have an experience with the local people. If you can dance. Exactly. It's like going into a private club, but your, your, your pass to get in is the, your ability to dance. The minute they see that you actually know how to do Argentine tango, you're one of them. The next thing That's you know, right. they're inviting you to have dinner or stay at their home or amazing exactly. things will happen. <laughs> well, I find that it comes in, in two phases. This is my experience. Phase one is they see you have dance shoes. Yeah. So that automatically puts you in a category. And then once you put the dance shoes on, then they check you out. And they're like, okay, what does she know? You know, she's just some, I, I always get that feeling like, you know, yeah. you're being judged. Yeah. And, uh, and that's like, okay, she's one of us, you know? That's right. You have to kind and, of prove that you're one of them, you know? Yes. And you're very yes. much accepted and it's very cool. And the places that people dance tango also sometimes really surprising, like, um, I, you know, traveled around teaching and I taught in um, like Helena, Montana, in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, St. Louis Obispo, California, the small pockets, but like a big group of tango dancers. And as far away as like Istanbul, where, you know, it's a big city, of course, but people think it's mostly Muslim. Like, would, yeah. would there be a lot of people into this close embrace tango? Yeah. It's one of the biggest cities in the world for Argentine tango. It's huge really? population of tango dancers. Berlin and Istanbul, Montreal, these are Paris, huge cities for tango outside Buenos Aires. And some say even there's more tango dancers there, local dancers there, than there are in Buenos Aires, because Buenos Aires is a lot of us foreigners coming to dance tango. Sure, sure. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh my gosh, Christy, that is, that is just so cool. I have to say that the time kind of flew by and I'm really bummed, <laughs> but I want to let everybody know that all of your social media links and links to the classes that you're doing and your website um, yeah. and some videos as well, we're going to put all of those underneath the video, wherever you're watching it on whatever platform. Right. Uh, so you will be able to check out everything that you're doing. And this might be an opportunity for folks to, you know, try an online class experience and kind of see if this is something that they want to do, because we, we will get through this and we'll get back to dance classes. Absolutely. And but, I'm in San Francisco. So whenever somebody visits San Francisco, you can find me on my website and would love to see you. There's always some tango activity going on, whether it's the event in Union Square or my weekly classes or visiting the local milongas. I love to host people that are interested in learning about Argentine tango. Oh, that's great. I, we've got to get back up to the Bay Area. We haven't been up in a while, yes. but we will definitely come and visit you and dance. And I really look forward to that. Christy, I really wish you all the best during this time. And I hope, as everyone does, that we will be dancing together and not virtually uh, really soon. Um, I just want to thank the viewers for tuning in today. And I want to let you know that next week, we're going to have the opportunity to see um, a couple of photographers. And this will be our, will it be our first? Yeah, our first opportunity to see the underwater world. So that's going to be really exciting. Um, 
we're going to be visiting places where you can go as a snorkeler as well as a diver. So places, you know, where you need air or, or not. Um, and that should be a lot of fun. So until then, I'm just hoping everyone continues to stay safe and keep your suitcases in storage, but come back here next week, Saturday at 6 PM and uh, we'll get your virtual travel fix on. Thank you so much, Christy. Thank you so much for having me. It's been wonderful. This was really fun. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.